channel welcome i hope you find the videos on here to be useful relatable and helpful if you do find them to be please do hit the subscribe button so that you can get notifications whenever i upload videos all right guys so what am i going to be discussing today today i'm going to be talking about ecfmg's alternative pathways so last year when the pandemic started step two clinical skills exam got cancelled by the US Embassy. Those of you who don't know this, um, Step 2 Clinical Skills was one of the three exams for medical graduates and IMGs needed to write, and even US students actually, needed to write before being admitted to residency programs. So now that that exam got cancelled, they needed to kind of uh, find an alternative way to allow people to apply last year. So they made up these alternative pathways to decide who could and who couldn't come through because essentially what they were lacking is a component to evaluate applicants' clinical skills. So they made five pathways and then this cycle ended, people matched, thank God. So, you know, it worked out. But then this year we were waiting for step two clinical skills to come back. Turns out it has not been resumed. So now these five pathways are going to stay until further notice. We're waiting to hear what will be the replacement, I guess, for the clinical skills exam. But the next upcoming path, match, excuse me, will use these five pathways. So I just wanted to detail them in this video because the application cycle has effectively changed. All right, so let's discuss uh, the certification pathways for ECFMG. So first of all, who should not apply and who's eligible? Um, do not apply if you've already taken step 2 CS clinical skills exam and you have passed it or if you're already certified by the ECFMG or if you applied last year through the pathways and you had your application approved. So in line with this, general eligibility to apply this year is the fact that you have to have no uh, step 2 clinical skills. Uh, passed and you cannot have been barred from the ECFMG certification process or from sitting USMLE. So I would assume people that are barred maybe had discrepancies in their application or there was some sort of re reasoning for why ECFMG or the USMLEs would not allow them to apply. So for the people who were approved last year or who applied for the pathways and those got um, okayed, essentially you will not have to reapply for ECFMG certification. You will not be required to redo the process. Essentially your expiration date for your certification will be extended for this upcoming match. So we're going to talk about the 2020 match and ECFMG certification via the pathways. If you want to see more information, you should go to the website, which is ecfmg.org certification uh, requirements 2020 match. Uh, you can also see it at the top of the screen. So this page will essentially detail everything that you really need to know. So let me talk about the English proficiency assessment. This has essentially been put in place to try and replace the step two clinical skills uh, exam. Uh, in particular for the communication component and the whole idea here is that this is an English test that is given but it's more geared for medical English um, so yeah they expect every applicant who is applying through the pathway so that's anybody who hasn't sat step two clinical skills before it got cancelled uh, to sit this exam uh, there are specific test centers where you can go and sit this exam so it's not everywhere and yeah i will talk more about that as i show you guys the website but i just want to mention that there are test preparation materials on the ecfmg so here's the oet site and we see all these countries where oet is held and this is a paper format exam however last year during the pandemic they did launch an electronic version of OET uh, just because there was a big demand and also because we had a situation where a lot of uh, testing centers were being closed down or people's countries were in lockdown. So another thing I want to say is just make sure you stay on top of the OET Corona update uh, 
site because this is quite important in terms of if you ha book a test and your test might possibly get cancelled, you want to know. So anyways, OET Home at Home was launched last year and it's basically for anybody who is not in a country with a test center or couldn't travel to a country with a test center. And the whole idea here was that you would sit this exam from your home computer. Uh, it has been paused at the moment, so we don't know when it will be returning. Um, so yeah, that was a very convenient solution. We will see if it will be coming back. And if it does, I will update you guys. Okay, so let's talk about pathways. We'll start with pathway number one. This is for anybody who is already licensed to practice medicine in another country. So essentially those who are already practicing doctors or who have been registered to practice and they need to be able to do this without supervision. I just want to mention things that were part of this pathway for last year that may or may not be pa part of it in this upcoming cycle. So one of the things that I just want to say for this is that last year they were I guess reviewing on a case by case basis those who have provisional uh, licenses so this is something that we see in the UK where you get provisional license and then you get your full license after a year or a certain time period of of actually doing your residency so that was one thing they were considering last year I don't know if it will be the case again this year as it was not mentioned um, and the other thing that I just want to mention is that there are certain things that you will be required to produce in order to apply for this pathway if it is similar to last year's that will be a certificate or a letter of good standing or current status um, that is directly issued by the regulatory authorities or that you retrieve from the regulatory authorities and upload to your pathway one application um, i know last year they also uh, I guess on a case by case basis, uh, received copies of just the licensing or the registration uh, certificates um, if people were not able to get these documents or letters of certification from the regulatory authorities. So, yeah. Things they will ask on this pathway are like your country that you trained in or got your licensing and registration, the licensing authority there, the dates that your license was conferred, um, if it's still valid and if it's not valid, when did it expire? And also, most importantly, has there been any sort of disciplinary action uh, that has been tied to your registration or licensing? So pathway two talks about anybody who's already passed a standardized clinical skills exam for medical licensure in other countries. So uh, these are exams such as the GMC's PLAB exam. So this is for the UK, the Australian uh, clinical examination part two and workplace based assessment. The UK also has the UK Foundation Program Clinical Assessment Stage 1 um, that was being accepted. Additionally, we see Canada's uh, exams. Ireland also is here. And then we have New Zealand um, and then Switzerland. And we have Chile's exam as well, which I'm not even going to attempt to read out. And the Malaysian Medical Council's exam as well. Um, so these were exams that were being accepted for pathway two. Additionally, they were accepting uh, certain medical schools with OSCEs or who administered OSCEs that the, that the ECFMG deemed to be, I guess, of quality. Let me put it that way, because I don't really know what the criterion was for this OSCE list. So anyways, the countries that they mentioned, or rather the institutes uh, related to these countries are Bangladesh, uh, a lot of institutes from Malaysia, from Pakistan as well, and then finally from Spain. So those were the four countries that we really saw in the OSCEs pathway. We will wait to see if they will be any more um, countries and institutes added. So with the 2021 cycle, Pathway 2 required an OSCE attestation form to be filled and directly sent from, the, from your medical institute. Additionally, people who had sat uh, licensing exams, licensing clinical exams, 
they were expected to upload these credentials or these documents. So then we move on to pathway three, which is medical school accreditation by an agency recognized by the World Federation for Medical Education. So WFME is basically an accreditation uh, agency, but it doesn't necessarily accredit medical schools. It more so works on the basis of countries as a whole. So I guess essentially you would be looking at the country's medical regulatory board and they would approve it um, you know, to say like, oh, the quality of education in this country as a whole and not as an institute is quite good or not good. Um, so this pathway was eligible for anybody who did not qualify for pathway one or two. If you qualified for one or two, you had to apply through one or two. Countries served by en- agencies with recognition of recognition of status, as you can see by this map. These are the countries. Um, uh, so you can visit this website, WD fme.org for more information i do advise that you do that because um, we see there are countries with pending applications and so it is important to see because there's a possibility your country may be pending an application such as mine poland uh, is definitely pending an application Um, and it also shows if they were previously recognized which was one of the things that they allowed in last year's application so you want to check that out so to compare to last year again this may not be the case for this coming year um, WFME had a list of eligible schools I don't really know what was the reasoning for this because as I mentioned it should be just be countries as a whole on the ECFMG side there is also a list of institutes I don't really know why these institutes and not just the countries which is why I say if you are from a WFME country and you don't see your institute on this list I would say just reach out to the ECFMG and double check that you will be eligible to apply again I would say wait till April when I guess all the information should be released by the ACFMG to follow up on that. So yeah, uh, this is the list. So pathway four, which is actually the pathway that I qualify for, is the medical school has to be accredited by an agency that has received a determination of comparability by the National Committee on Foreign Medical Education and Accreditation, NCFMEA. Wow, that was a mouthful. So yeah, so looking at last year, pathway four, I'm gonna see the countries that were included last year. So this pathway came really at the end of the period when people were submitting their application. So let's say the portal was opening in three days and this application came like three days before the portal was opening. Uh, So some people I think might have submitted their applications, but uh, I think for the most part, a lot of these people on this application may have not been able to get their applications in on time uh, or fully in on time. So maybe a bit delayed. But now these are the countries that were really added there in the last minute, kind of like a hustle and bustle attempt. And I hope they will still be there next year because my university is on here. So we see Poland. Woohoo! So Poland's finally here. And I see Medical University of Łódź, which just, you know, fills my heart. But we got to wait and see if this will be the case again for this cycle. Then we see United Kingdom, which was shocking because, you know, we talk about the UK having such a high standard of education and they were not included on ECFMG's initial list. Okay, so for Pathway 5, we talk about um, medical schools issues a degree jointly with a U.S. medical school that is accredited by the LCME, which is the Liaison Committee on Medical Education in the U.S. This is basically the regulatory board for medical schools in the U.S. So I just want to mention, again, like the last two pathways, you have to have not been eligible for pathway one or two in order to apply through this pathway. I just want to mention the two institutes that apply for pathway five because there are only two and this is while Cornell Medicine in Qatar and Duke University um, which is I guess in collaboration with the National University of Singapore Medical School so this is in Singapore. So for the 2021 match, um, clinical skills attestation form was used 
to fulfill pathway three, four, and five. And this form was filled from individuals, universities, and sent uh, directly from the universities. And then we talk about the sixth pathway. So the sixth pathway, this is a new pathway that did not exist last year. It is actually more so for everybody who was left out of last year's match. And this will entail an evaluation of clinical patient encounters by licensed physicians. So essentially, it'll be like a step two clinical skills exam or a mini one anyways, as they say, mini clinical uh, evaluation exercise and again like the previous things that I've mentioned if you're not if you're eligible for pathway one or two you cannot use this but additionally three four five you cannot use this pathway those who were not eligible to apply those who have failed step two clinical skills or uh, one or more times will now be able to apply through um, this pathway so this is great because now nobody's kind of left out in the cold and i just want to mention on the fact that this exam more details and instructions will follow however i think it is meant to open in july so i don't know when exactly they will produce information for people to prepare for this but it's just important to note that that is the situation for this pathway. Okay, for those who are interested in hearing about these pathways and how they came up, how they came about the process of establishing these pathways, there was a webinar done by ECFMG. I think check the ECFMG's resources tab. Uh, on their page or you may be able to find it on YouTube. I don't know if it's available any longer. So I just want to point out here, you can go to the resources tab and you should really try to sign up for their e-newsletters, um, specifically the ECFMG reporter so that you can always receive information regarding um, these pathways and any updates. Two things to stress here is that Pathways 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5 are expected to open in April 2021, while Pathway 6 is only expected to open in July 2021. So just keep that in mind. So those are the six pathways. I don't know if our fees will continue to be 900 and if pathway six might possibly be charged 1200 since they are going to be administering an exam um, and then although the step two clinical skills attempts have been cancelled they will continue to report any sort of attempts on transcripts when they're transmitted to the universities and hospitals they are applying to U.S. Emily also had its own changes uh, this year and they decided that the cutoff is no longer going to be six attempts for an exam. It's going to be four attempts. So anybody who might have had five or six attempts may not be able to apply um, for match this coming year. I don't really know fully about this, but this is the statement that was put out. So I'm just, you know, repeating it. I would, just, I would say somebody who has five or six attempts should probably follow up. Okay, guys. Bless it, week.